Hey all, welcome to episode 96 of Photography Insights, the show that interviews people from the photography industry. I'm really pleased to have you back on board again, and we've had some lovely guests recently, and I'm adding another very friendly person to my list of friends. So this time we are discussing the dark room with John Whitmore, aka The Dark Shed. John discusses his life about the dark room, children and all things analogue. He has his own YouTube show and produces his live and interesting behind the scenes approach to making art. It's the challenges and ideas he has and shows us how to do these. But what I really like about John is his honesty. He tells you straight away, um, he makes mistakes just like all of us and he doesn't mind saying when something goes wrong and then he'll usually explain why it went wrong and how he fixed it. He's a very approachable guy on social media and you can often hear him on Sunny 16 podcast with his friend Graham and the gang. In this one we discuss friendships and the photography show, playing and painting with Deb and Fix, pictures of children, safety in the dark room, lumen prints and grass, the mentality of shooting film, thumb signatures, learning the incorrect way, the importance of combining techniques, how to remove hairs from negatives, an unusual way to do large prints, the business of enjoyment, photographers versus artists, and being multi-skilled. John has his attempt at describing and narrowing down human life too, so please don't miss that. Uh, We do discuss a couple of people in this one, so please do check out the show notes where you'll get links to some of these uh, resources. Uh, For anyone who's into dark rooms, um, I'll not hide this one from you. It's a uh, book, it's called The Dark Room Handbook by Michael Langford. Um, as you'll hear on the show, it's a very good book and I'll try and take some um, quick pictures of it for you all and it's very reasonable to buy. Uh, we do discuss a couple of other photographers and interesting podcasts, so please do check them out. And of course, we have to put John through the random questions. So we'll discuss his um, punch and present choices. Uh, We'll discuss mullet conventions, spiders and irons. So don't miss out on that. And of course he gives us someone for his um, pay it forward. So do listen uh, for what he recommends. I'd like to thank the friends of the show. uh, David uh, Film Dev who have been in contact recently. Um, He's still only doing um, C41 colour at the minute due to how busy he has been, which is obviously wonderful to hear in one way, Um, but Blessing's not got time to do any black and white at the minute. And of course Pete at Static, um, he's getting some more and more amazing artists and I can't wait. Uh, There's some releases coming out uh, imminently, so that'd be really cool. So again, do check out the website or show notes. Um, you'll see links to them obviously on the website it's there all the time Uh, we don't earn anything from this this is just something we do for people and that help us Uh, it's all about helping each other so um, I suppose all we can do now is sit back relax we'll play the intro uh, and away our good friend John Welcome to the show, John. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> All right, mate. How are you on this <laughs> yeah, wonderful fine, evening? Thank <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's nice to finally get you on here, mate, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. I, mean, I think the last time I saw you might have been at the photo show over mm. a year ago now, isn't it, I think? I know. So I remember um, photo show was a big thing for a lot of us, where I think it was the first show I'd actually been to ever. Because obviously mm. I'm not into being a photographer so long, and I don't don't like digital cameras and looking at stuff. But then 
when um, Graham and the gang at Sunday got together, uh, this idea of me, I thought, oh, it'll be ace. And then we started talking to, like, um, I think there was Steve at Cromer, um, Steve at Cosmo was going, Paul at Analog. Yeah. And I was like, well, that'd be ace, because I spoke to everyone, but never met anyone. Yeah. And, you know, was yeah. it similar for you? Yeah, like I've never been to a photo show before. I, I, okay, I have n- I've no interest in those sort of yeah. big exhibitions at all. They just they freak me out. They're just they're just too overwhelming, and yeah. I'm ultimately I'm not interested in being sold at. Yeah. Like if if I'm looking to buy something, I'd rather kind of do the research independently and feel like I've got a choice in what I'm buying. Whereas in those sort of environments, it's like, here it is, here's the latest cameras, get everything. So I avoid them. Um, but yeah, like you said, as soon as it kind of became a bit of, well, actually, here's a bunch of people that I think I've met a couple of them before, but like yeah. everyone getting together, it was such a wonderful thing to do. And actually the walking around the show part was, was bearable because of it once i enjoyed it it was bearable um. <laughs> <laughs> i know it, it was weird because we seemed to it seemed to be like we found a quiet part because mm-hmm. it was like me you steve and then i think steve cosmo would be behind us as well so there only seemed to be we i don't know where everyone else was it was just like four of us wasn't there yeah I think everyone was probably looking at the latest Nikon or Canon cameras or something, and yeah. we weren't interested in that. So no. we just stood in, in like a, an empty booth area, didn't we? And just, yeah. <laughs> just had a chat for a while. Yeah, and it was really cool because obviously at that stage, um, I think you was a friend of Steve's, weren't you? Uh, no, I'd never met Steve before. You'd never met Steve mm. either. Okay. I don't. Uh, do you know what? I don't know if I had a chroma then. I must have had a chroma at that point, so okay. I, I probably commu- I probably communicated with him yeah. like, on social media or something. Um, I don't know if I'd if I'd met anybody before. I can't remember. It's, <laughs> it's, I can barely remember last week. So yeah, no, no, it's fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> for anyone listening, John has um, someone young in his life, so it's keeping him very uh, busy at the minute, isn't it, mate? <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> All the joys of parenthood, the oh, yeah. photography, eh? <laughs> the dark room's a great place to escape to, um, but I'm just it's energy levels I'm I struggle with. I, my my partner's incredibly supportive, and she like she's still on um, maternity leave at the moment, so it's kind of I'm actually being able to spend a fair amount of time in the dark room, and. And what? Well, not unwind, but I guess detach from it a bit while I'm in here. You know, get the music on, oh. turn the lights off, and just just get lost in the processes for a while. Um, but then, yeah, as soon as, as soon as I'm back in the house, all chaos ensues. Mm. It's quite <laughs> weird going from one to the other, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's so like during the day, it's really difficult because I'll, I'll pop up to the house to get a cup of tea or something, and um, it's just it's very difficult to leave because it's just like my daughter like she's changing every few days now something new will happen and it's like i don't i don't want to miss that Mm. um so it's it's very like when i'm in here and i'm I'm lost in it then time just disappears um but actually kind of leaving that the home environment i'm i do find difficult yeah see i missed that hopefully a bit of that did you? <laughs> yeah, because mine were already, mine would have been far before I was into photography, you say. So I didn't mm-hmm. have the baby and toddler stage in that sense. Right. So it's a bit different. Um, oh, f- taking photos of, of my daughters, I, I love it. <laughs> I've got yeah. some cracking black and white photos of her I'm oh. really proud of. <laughs> really tells. proud of <laughs> yeah now, now it's uh, when they get to eight nine ten it's like oh don't want a photo <laughs> and they're putting yeah. their hand up and hiding away it's very different isn't it? you need yeah. to get them into instax photography although that's an expensive game to get into isn't it yeah my wife loves it um she's had one for a year or so and um oh excellent we got her some for a birthday some black and white 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I love it. I think it's an ace thing, and I leave her to do it because um, I think it's nice. She's got something like that. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I, I've tried to get my partner into photography, and she's just not interested at all. No, no, <laughs> like, she takes lots of photos on her phone, um, yeah. but it's, it's all about kind of memory making for her on her yeah. phone and sending to family and friends and stuff. It's not, there's no kind of thought. Wow. Well, I don't want to say there's no thought process behind it. Not, <laughs> she yeah, just not, think about it. Yeah. Not artistic side, is it? It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah she's not thinking about it. It's like, Oh, it's a photo. Like how can I compose it better? It's literally like this thing's in front of me. Snap, snap, snap. Yeah. Yeah. I know. What you mean. Uh, it's all so different. I mean, um, I said to my eldest, I think it was earlier this week, I said, oh, I'm, mm. I'm talking to someone who um, goes in the dark room as his job. And I says, is there a question you would like to ask him? <laughs> Sometimes Excellent. he says some like profound stuff. And so here's your question. Oh, nice. How do you feel working in a dark room because it's dark, there's limited space and full of chemicals? <sighs> How do, how do I? How does it make me feel? Yeah, because she's um, a very caring girl, you say. Okay, um, I feel very relaxed, and it's it's like safe. You know, like I mm-hmm. I feel incredibly comfortable in this environment, um, and yeah, it's it's somewhere where I know I can come like, if I'm stressed about something or. Or whatever it is that's happening in in the real world, yeah. I know I can come in here and just forget about it all. You know, completely switch off. Um, and yeah, it's that's a wonderful thing. I mm. think. Um, I think so. Yeah. Have, okay. you, have you got a dark room? Yes. Um, and I've had a minute recently as well. So. Yeah. I, th- I think that's why she sort of asked it because she knows what mine's like, which it stinks of chemicals. She's got <laughs> cobwebs and spiders. Excellent. Um, so it's um, a little bit scary, but she's just pretty all right with me in it, to be fair. Have um, you introduced her to printing? Yes, there? she's done it with me. Excellent. Yep. She, Good stuff. Um, she did the timing. Uh, she would switch the enlarger on and off and then she would put it in the tray and then I would do the agitating after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but she's done some of the trays. She just won't She won't wear gloves. So mm-hmm. I said, well, you're not doing it then. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, you've got to look after your kids, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, safety. Fa- like, actually, that's something that's changed in my kind of routine is how much I, I wash my hands I, I know everyone's washing their hands more <laughs> at the moment anyway but like in my own home I'm as soon as I, I've finished doing any work out I thoroughly wash my hands whereas before my daughter was born I was just like yeah whatever <laughs> yeah Stinker it's like do they sm- do they smell a bit nah that's, that's fine but now it's just like no I have to thoroughly wash my hands before I go and pick her up you know it's yeah it's like you say it's there's a responsibility there isn't there yeah and I think that's what's been good in my life in that sense that I've always thought I have to be careful. So, so it's an outbuilding, so it, and it's locked, so they mm-hmm. won't go in it. But you still have to carry some things in and out. Um, uh, and, you know, if they do go in it, you've got to think, I can't leave out O uh, uh, and sink open because there mm-hmm. could be that time they go in and fall yeah. over or drop something. Yeah. So... But well, we've done um, lumen prints as well. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah. So I've just left a tray of fixer in there and um, uh, I've used some glass sheets. So she'll go in the dark room because there's no wind. So she's, you know, switched mm-hmm. on and um, she'll put a paper on there and she'll get a grass. So my fixer's got bits of grass in it at the minute. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Character, I call it. <laughs> no, that's superb. I think it's like it's a great introduction to kind of understanding the fundamentals of photography, isn't it? Doing oh, lumen prints. It's brilliant. You know, so if, if you can get your head around how, why that's happening, then you, you can see why a negative image works as well. Mm. And an enlarger, it's exactly the same process. Yeah. You see, I think this 
this is the bit that I've been missing because um, obviously I started with digital and I've moved away to analog. So I think I only learned the technical side of how to work a camera, but now I'm slowly working towards understanding what light does in all mm -hmm. elements of photography. Mm -hmm. So I think the dark rooms help me out so much now. Yeah, I, uh, I can see how how it, like it 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 all interlinks for me. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't. No, I don't know how to describe it. It is once you, once you've experienced that entire workflow of mm -hmm. having a negative, processing it, seeing, like exposing your film processing it seeing the result of that putting it in larger then exposing that onto paper then developing that and how it that you've gone from the thing you photographed mm. to that print it's like okay right you, you you have to kind of like trace back don't you and think well what's happened what am i doing with light at each of these stages yeah <laughs> and how does it work and suddenly it's just like yeah it all makes sense now you know, yeah, I see why fil film is negative, and I see why that then produces a positive on the paper. Yeah, um, but I think for some of us, you see, it's. Um, I think there's a gap in teaching on YouTube and things like that where we're not explaining it now. We're missing these steps where um, you go buy your film from like Polar Analog, you get your camera from wherever, you stick it in, you send it off to a lab. And that's it now. So mm -hmm. we've missed our, our, all these steps, like you're saying. And I think we've missed the understanding of um, what affects what. So underexposing your negative can have a detrimental effect to your print. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, I, guess, I guess it depends on the usage, doesn't it? Because it does, yeah. a, a lot of people are shooting on film just to get that aesthetic and yeah. they get this they get scans back right. and they don't care about the negatives you know right. it's all about they've got a digital image that they possibly don't even manipulate because it's immediately the look that they what the aesthetic that they want right. from that film you know and, and from the scan so there's they don't need to understand anymore the process it's almost a digital process apart yeah. from the camera part so it they just can't see the images they're taking it or after the immediately after they've taken it. So to me, that's, it is still analog photography, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Is it, is it, is that worth it? I don't know. That's a tricky question. I don't want to put people down that don't print yeah. their own work because I don't think it matters really. Like if you're enjoying it, then there's definitely, there is definitely a different mentality, mentality to shooting film over shooting digital. Mm. Um, but I think everyone should at least once go in a dark room and print their negatives to experience that next step of, of analog work. Yeah. I, my, my whole world changed once I've done printing. Um, I, like I, I admit I'm not a massive fan of um, developing. I, I don't mm -hmm. enjoy that part, but printing, I absolutely adore. I think it's, I think it's just seeing that image appear. <laughs> uh, how fast or how slow it is depending on how cold it is um, it's yeah. it's amazing because then you start controlling things and you think hmm um, like uh, this year uh, or over COVID uh, I understood about um, the lamp and how much light it needs to go to the paper because of the distance between the two and I've mm -hmm. never ever thought about this all I was concerned <laughs> is that's the light source. It goes on the paper, and I do my timing depending on how hot it is in the room, basically. Right, yeah. That was what I did last year. And then this year it's been, oh, light has to travel. So depending on how far it travels, it's going to affect the exposure time. Mm -hmm. Because then my, um, then my enlarger <laughs> broke. <laughs> so I was like, right, I've got two options. And someone said something really simple, which I've said before, which was just put something underneath my paper to make it closer to the enlarger. And I thought right. the other way, fixing the enlarger. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, 
Oh, yeah. And, of course, what do you have to think? That's going to affect your exposure time because it's nearer <laughs> the light source. <laughs> as you would when you shoot in a picture. Was that... To, that must have been changing the size of the image as well, though. It would, of course, yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be another bad issue, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're getting uh, smaller prints because the paper had to be closer to the enlarger. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, like, and, like that is one of the reasons I love kind of darkroom work and, and all kind of analog processes is how practical and manual it all is. It's yeah. like... It, if you've got a problem, it's not a case of you go into the control panel on your computer and try and <laughs> dig deep in the registry to try and fix it. It's like, yeah. oh, I need to I need to get a screwdriver or a bit of card or some gaffer tape yeah. to fix this or to or to do something to create something different with your print. It's like I'm not I'm not using a plug in or a filter. Yeah. I'm using a bit of card or I'm using a bit of cloth or I'm using a brush. You know, it's, it's all, it's just a completely, di it's a real world tool set to, mm. to create and maintain what you're doing, um, which I love, you know, it's, it's all kind of like DIY tinkering, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I, so I, the thing is, I don't normally use trays. I've got, um, Nova slot processors. Oh, okay. Have you yeah. ever seen them? Yeah. So it, it's all kind of tucked away, like with yeah. a very thin strip that's actually exposed to the air. Um, so I don't really get that chemical chemical smell, right? But I do, I do use trays sometimes when I'm doing like workshops or I've been doing kind of live streams on YouTube at the moment. So I have to use trays for that, otherwise you can't see what's going on, can you? No, exactly, um, and that's maybe, what I've seen you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it it it's been good fun using the trays again, actually, because hmm. that the magic of seeing the image and and everything kind of is still there. It, <laughs> it, it reminds me of like a um, crazy chef. Um, like crazy with loads chef, of pans. Yeah, because oh, right, yeah. if you see me working, spills are going everywhere. <laughs> and and I'm, then I'm looking at my prints and going, why is there stains on the edge? Oh, that was my finger. <laughs> oh, no. And everyone, like, it's that's the artist's signature, though, isn't it? You, know, if you can leave like a fixer thumbprint on your it print. That's it, you've signed your work, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. This is where I say, I think people like you could do this, um, do some lessons for us. Um, mm -hmm. because I think these are the knowledge gaps. Because too much YouTube is this is how you do it, and this is what you get. But we don't all live in the real world. I don't live in a perfect world. I might not do this for six months. I'm not wasting chemicals. I don't have the money for that. I'm going to mm -hmm. use what I've got. Uh, so I need to know what might happen if I use old dev. What happens if I use old stop? Yeah. And I don't think there's any videos about that because everyone teaches you how to do it properly, which... Well, yeah, this is kind of. Uh, I, I agree. I think there's there's too much there's too much ed editing and kind of display of perfection yeah. in a lot of tutorials. When the rea like say the reality, when you're actually doing stuff, is problems occur, and oh. you've got to then problem solve to work out where those problems have come from. And the only way you learn that is over long periods of time where you make those mistakes yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, and yeah, it would be useful if, I don't know, there was a series of, of prints that went like, like you put it in the fixer first or you splashed it with fixer, then you developed it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so people could see, oh, if I'm getting that, then that's what the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, it's tricky though, isn't it? Because part of the enjoyment of, doing these things is learning as well it is for you me know, yeah like, I, I don't think it was originally i think originally it was i wanted something nice mm -hmm. now now it's both yeah um, there, there's so there's so much to learn about mm -hmm. it and there's no way you could pre um learn all the knowledge about all the problems you're going to encounter i don't think <clears throat> excuse me um so yeah yeah maybe Mm. I think there are, there are probably some 
some scenarios that you could show that that crop up kind of time and time again. It's just like, oh yeah, if you're a developer, say, I think I, I might have actually already done a video on that. If you've got exhausted de- developer, huh. what sort of results you get? Um, just so you can recognize it and just el- immediately eliminate it. That's exactly. the thing, isn't it? It's, a, yeah. it's being able to go, oh, that's definitely the developer that's gone. That's what's causing that. It's nothing to do with the enlarger, my exposure times, the negative, hmm. all the variables, you immediately know what, what that problem is. Or you could get it down to two or three probably. Um, yeah, that's right. Because, I mean, yeah. I've seen you do it. Obviously, I've watched some of your YouTube, uh, especially like the colour one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you you were like oh um, it's not quite right and you'd have another go um and it, it's another go and i, I like that because it's um you being real you're trying something new and you're up in your game all the time and you know, full credit to you I did, I, <laughs> I did a stream last night mm. and it was an it was a disaster you okay. know? Like, I, had lo- I had loads of problems as i was doing it like but that's I don't know. I I much I prefer making that sort of content. Mm. Content, what a horrible word. <laughs> I like making <laughs> that content. I I like showing people that because mm. I don't want people to be put off by the fact that like showing it and it being perfect in a ten minute session. Mm. Somebody goes in and they make the most amazing print in ten minute is not real. Mm. You know the reality is you go into a dark room. And like I'm, I'm fairly experienced with this now. I've been doing it probably four or five years, and I still make mistakes. You know, mm. I'm still learning, and I've got no problem showing people that. And I don't think people should be afraid of of showing their mistakes and and problems that they have. I think I think it's it's perfectly normal. Yeah, I do. No, that's cool. I mean, I think one of the things is. You're not afraid to try, which is great. Um, and I think it's the fact that you're trying things with light and techniques as well. Um, so one of them was the pre uh, prefix, mm-hmm. and I thought it was fascinating. So I went away and did my own. Um, oh, nice! Yeah, because uh, I don't want to copy. So I had an idea. Oh, <laughs> I'm uh, sure somebody's like. To be fair, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before. Um, mm. but I'm sure. I'm sure people have. You know, oh, these. Oh yeah, are, of course they have. Yeah. These, yeah. these, like this whole process is what it's like. Well over a hundred years old. I don't even know what dates this sort of like dark room printed started, but like in this in this well structured form. Um, so yeah hundreds of thousands of people will have put on fix before doing the the, the development phase before mm. um but it, it just cropped up you know from experimenting and i think that's how you end up learning and it's how you end up creating things that are then unique to you because you start combining that with other techniques and and most importantly with your photography mm. and what i like experimenting on those sort of things for is then i learn techniques that one day might complement the images in a very unique way yes and that's I, I keep saying this but to me that's where the magic happens when you've got a process that complements the image and the story and the meaning and the message mm-hmm. that you're trying to convey yep. when all that aligns that's magical you know? yeah if it's just if it's just a technical process it's like you can be wowed by it and you can be impressed mm-hmm. if it's just an amazing photo you can have the same feeling but when you combine an amazing photo with an amazing uh, complementary process mm. it's like woohoo <laughs> struck gold <laughs> <laughs> no you've nailed it for me mate that is exactly what's happening with me now and again all covid related um, reading books, experimenting. Um, we've all been chatting about stuff, and I know I messaged you about um, prefix and trying other ideas. Um, mm-hmm. You know, one of them I tried that stupid idea: trying double exposure um, in dark room with two different size prints. I mean, it was ridiculously mm-hmm. complicated, uh, <laughs> and it wasn't great when it came out. But I tried it; it worked. Yeah. Um, if I learn it, like, 
and that's in in the future you might end up with two images where you're just like oh i wish i could combine them together mm. in a certain way and now you've got you've got the building blocks to know that you can do that and move on from it and give it a go with something that might work you yeah. know or <laughs> the, yeah. the results that you perceive exactly. as better i mean this idea of prefixing gave um i tested it with a model's face uh, and mm-hmm. I just prefixed out exit over her eyes mm-hmm. uh, and then over her lips. Uh, and the photo was done. Um, it's the closest photo I've ever done. I mean, I was literally an inch away from her face. Uh, I was using these uh, close-up rings. Never done it before. Mm-hmm. And the photo looks large format because the depth of field literally is a lip and then it just disappears. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's my favorite, one of my favorite photos I've ever done. Um, I did it in, it's a cool photo, but I did it in black and white. Um, so because I prefixed that, and it changes the context of the shot. It goes from mm-hmm. a beauty shot into the opposite. So I'm putting X's over the things that we find beautiful, eyes and mm-hmm. lips. So yeah. then I'm like, this gives me an idea for a project then. <laughs> Let me shoot loads yeah. of models' faces. Yeah, and then I'll come and then up with... mess them up in the dark room. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> like so that that technique of prefixing, mm. like there are there are different approaches to kind of blocking light, aren't there? Yeah. But as you're exposing, you could you could just put something in the way. You could put a bit of card, a bit of cloth, yeah, an object, it, yeah. or whatever yeah. it is. But the the beauty with the prefixing is it takes on the texture of the thing that you use to apply that chemical. That's right. So, like, if you're using a brush, you get the brush shapes, and every time you do that, it's unique and it's mm-hmm. different. And that's like I've been playing around with painting on developer and painting yeah, borders that, on yeah. with the developer as well. And I, I love it because it, it means that every print you make is is unique. There's no replicating it. Mm. Um, and I'm really interested in pursuing that idea. You know, it's it's the kind. It's almost like instant photography isn't it it's like you're making one print and that that will never be replicated it other than that original print oh exactly mate Uh, and i think all these things are just messing around um obviously it's going to help me do exactly what you said i'll come up with an idea for a project where it involves processes and that's what i'm trying to aim towards so my idea of covid while i can and while we're Locked down and barred at weekends is do as much as I can. Mm-hmm. The lumen printing. How do I know I might not use lumen printing with a model? Yeah. No reason. I could do multiple yeah. exposure with a lumen print. I'm. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, you could use that as your mask to block out certain areas. You could cut around the lumen print to create a mask or something. Yeah. yeah there are lots of options there. Yeah. And. You see, I didn't know all this was available because I'm too <laughs> focused technically on doing a job. And I blame you well, so this, for that sense. It, that's exactly... I, 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 think, I think it's a perfectly normal and kind of natural way to get into a subject. I, I started very technically. Yeah. And it's, like, it's where the inspiration comes from as well, isn't it? Like, Of course, when you start looking at darkroom printing, the first name that crops up is Ansel Adams Mm -hmm. you know so you you see the prints that were created by him and they've got an enormous kind of creative artistic flair to them Mm. but you're also wowed by the technical so it's like the technical as when people talk about people talk about photos in like what camera did you use what lens is it people talk about the technical aspects because it's easy Mm. it's an easy entry point into understanding and talking to other people about it so it's like if i can say i use this in larger i use this paper um these were the exposure times this is the developer strength it's very concrete black and white information whereas as soon as you start talking about the creative side of it which lives in like a gray area it's very difficult to communicate about and understand um so I, i think the technical part is is for a lot of people the easiest entry point into things and yeah. i did exactly the same I, I started in a very technical route um i was all about being able to replicate 
create a print, work out the dodging and burning and the exposure and the contrast and everything, right. and then replicate that process and produce like 20 prints that would be identical. Yeah. Right. Cause in my head, I was like, this is what I need to do. I need to do like a limited edition run of yeah. 20 prints that I will then try and sell. Yeah. And now I'm just like, I actually just want to make one print. I want to get yeah. to the point where I've made one unique print or maybe, maybe two, you know, like, so I could keep one myself um, and have like an artist proof and, and then have an actual kind of exhibition or for sale print. Yeah. Um, and, that, and I'd leave it at that. You know, and if I want duplicates of it, I'll scan it or take a photo of it. You know, mm. rather rather than this kind of almost mechanical process of producing prints. Because if you want a mechanical process, you just do a print on your computer, don't you? Yeah. You, know, you set the That's file up and just one. go. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really different. Uh, I mean, I have to say, I love what you're doing, and I love the fact you're interested in this playing of outside because not everyone is into that and one of the things i'm going to sh what i'm going to do is show john is um have you heard have you seen this book john uh no i haven't uh so he is an absolute master um so uh, people have heard my story of how i got into that room uh i asked him about this author so it's michael langford and the book's called dark room handbook and he said he was a fabulous dark room legend but he was also an entertaining lecturer. Mm -hmm. Did workshops a lot. Now, this is the best book I've ever seen because it contains pictures and how to actually do stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a dark room book like it. So for people like me that are slow learners, um, the, the diagrams help you. I mean, he's got photograms solarization mm -hmm. um is put in about um coloring um doing color prints from black and white chems with color paper uh yeah. he's, he's done airbrushing color types uh, um honestly there's everything in here with masking building your own dark room um it sounds like I, I should get that book basically and just go through it shouldn't i on youtube i think just, you should mate uh, yeah every week just replicate each each tutorial <laughs> I, I think there's some things in here that i was thinking oh god i hope john tries these because uh, the same <laughs> well, send me a request and i'll do one <laughs> awesome mate Di uh, dye transfers what's that uh using color dyes oh uh, okay yeah from colour transparencies mm. uh, and then making positives from negatives, um, diffusers, uh, diffusers. Now that, that sounded interesting because um, I had this idea about uh, the dark room and I was thinking, uh, oh, so say the model's face again. Mm -hmm. How do I make her face? I want to make it look um, like a horror image where you sort of black out the eye, um, uh, rub out the eyes, in essence. So you've just got skin right. over eyes. And I thought there has to be a dark room way of doing it. The only way I can think is you diffuse that area. Uh, what well, to kind of make it all softer and blurred? Yeah. Um, how could you do that to one? You could have a lens that you hold. So instead of using a, a dodging tool, uh -huh. you could possibly have like uh, a lens or um, what have I seen use like um, a sweet wrapper? I yeah, think it's something that lets the say, light yeah. flow, yeah, yeah, that blurs it. And you'd use that as like a dodging tool over it. So the light's passing through still to expose onto it, but yeah. it's being scattered everywhere. Yes. Um I think if you if you had a lens, you could do that. As, like you could put, like use a maybe a magnifying glass or something, um, and just move it around and change the angle of it. That might work as well. Because then it won't be focusing sharp, would it? No, because no, you, you need, need to. Need try yeah. There you go. I'll send that as a yeah. request. Just try try your glasses. Take. <laughs> Yeah, could do. Couldn't I? Take yeah. one of the lens out of your glasses and just yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so that's give what it I want to do. See what I mean? It, 
come up with that idea now, it might be a way for me to make another uh, addition to like a model set of images yeah or you that, could you could rub something on the negative as well like maybe like some vaseline or something that's um, even a better idea because that's easier isn't it yeah although you might damage your negative <laughs> vaseline will wipe off though and it's not corrosive yeah it, it should do yeah. No, yeah, you should be all right with that. Just give it a good wash. But yeah, like a, a little smear of Vaseline over the area you want to blur will, yeah. uh, will diffuse the light at that point as well. Because you can use that to get get rid of um, like hairs and stuff on your negative as well. Ah. That's clever. Yeah. <laughs> that's Because right. obviously it's the same reason that they used to use it for beauty shots with the camera, wasn't it? Oh, like they rubbing it on the lens? Used, yeah. Yeah. So it's the same yeah, as soften it. Yeah. Yep. So you see what I think I I say I think. I've never tried those techniques, so there's yeah, an experiment, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a stupid thing to do. Uh but then I like playing. <laughs> I, when I first got into photography, experimentation is what I did. Mm -hmm. so, so I started with light painting. Oh, uh, okay. Literally yeah. the first day I met someone, they were doing it. <laughs> so yeah, I learned all that stuff first. Um, I think that helped me, though. Light paint is good fun. Oh, I remember doing that great fun. a while back. It's, uh, when, you, when you've got a group of people doing light painting, it's just, especially if you've got people that mm. aren't particularly into photography, like it's a really engaging, fun thing for them to do. So, like on a digital camera where you can see the results straight away. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, everyone gets on board once they've seen that first image they're like hold on a minute i want to draw my name i want to put like a put, <laughs> give some big eyes and ears yeah <laughs> why do i draw it backwards oh yeah you get all sorts of <laughs> daft questions it's yeah yeah i've done um why wool um, mm -hmm. stuff like that great fun dangerous but have you fun. ever have you ever shot that tried that on film no because it was pre me shooting film you say oh uh, okay yeah you should give it a go on film see mm. if you can uh achieve the same results mm. yeah cause <laughs> I, I like challenges you say so yeah i mean there's there's a lot of things you need to do i think um you've, you've got to have an understanding of um some of the basics you need but I, it's amazing how many um people i've interviewed and spoke to that uh, they've maybe said, I haven't tried Darkroom before, or I haven't tried developing because uh, you need all this equipment. Mm -hmm. And I went, you need to come down and do a session with me. I said, I spend <laughs> half the time with the door open. Mm -hmm. And I says, my print's come out, and I've got three trays. I said, it's a, it's a brick building with no light, no water, no electricity. But do you know what? I make it work. I, I I do think there is this perception that, like, well, you can see my dark room now, yeah. can't you? There's a perception that you need this to exactly. be able to do dark room printing, yeah. and it's it's just it's not true. Like, I used to print in the bathroom, I used to print in my <laughs> garage, um, and it's only like in the last year that I've I've now got a real dedicated space to do it in. Yeah. You, you just like. There are, there are setups that you can like you can pick up a 35 mil in larger dirt cheap off eBay. They're, yeah. they're kicking around. Like, and if you're lucky, you might find one for free from somebody. Yeah. Um, and then from that, you just need trays. <laughs> you know, everyone's got a sink in their house. Well, most people have a sink in their house with mm -hmm. running water. And, and that's it. You know, <laughs> obviously you need your negatives as well. But if you're already into film photography, then that's, that's a given, isn't it? You know, you've, yeah, exactly. you've already got some images to work from. Um, so, yeah, and like traditionally, a lot, of, uh, still a lot of people do their printing in the winter months only. They'll photograph during the summer and they yeah. do their printing in the winter because come four or five o'clock, particularly in, like in the Northern Hemisphere, like in the UK, mm. it's dark. Yeah. So close your curtains, get yourself a big blackout blind or something. And you could you could do the printing anywhere in in, in your home. Mm. Yeah, you just got to be safe, that's all, aren't it? And sensible that you know, yeah. you know, you might do some spillages, so you need to think about that. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, we laugh a 
actually did. I was in the height of summer, very first time with a mate, um, because he was learning at uni. So we put ourselves in the dorm. Oh, my God, we were sweating. We stank <laughs> of chemicals. And I swear, we we weren't high, but we had the fumes in us, and we didn't yeah. feel – we felt a bit, bit funny from it. <laughs> Which I've um, a lesson a long t- a long time ago. I like, actually when I kind of first started to get back into film photography, it was um, through a friend who was he was getting into large format and he was obsessed with trying to do massive mural prints. Yeah. And uh, we had this setup where we were exposing, and it had an enlarger on its back, and we we're exposing onto a wall onto oh, huge yeah. rolls of photographic paper, and. Uh, the, one of the first techniques we kind of came up with to develop these things is we both had our like well, I had like swimming shorts on and we got in the shower together right <laughs> in the dark <laughs> and we did drew all the curtains in his house we had a couple of like safe lights up the stairs we went up to the shower once we'd exposed the rock like huge roll of paper climbed into the shower attached it to the wall and had sponges with buckets of developer that we were then sponging over the over the roll of paper wow <laughs> and then we'd wash it off with the shower yeah. and then do the same with fixer and we stank of fixer um but we got images it worked it, it worked did. a treat and yeah it was so much fun <laughs> there's been a few projects like that i know the old um the old gentleman who got me into it he said he'd done a floor before Mm-hmm. covered an entire floor and never uh, but he used to work in a diary and was a job yeah so yeah, gifted man yeah like like from that I've, I've i do have sporadic attempts at doing big mural style prints um and i've kind of perfected the technique a bit now i just i roll the paper through a trough rather than having massive trays or having to go into a shower to do so it you do a bit of a time um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just you roll it through like a scroll, and and it's absolutely fine. And mm-hmm. like I've done that in spaces as well, like so created camera obscuras, exposed within the camera obscura, and developed on site, um, which is great fun. It's like it's an absolute mission to do, but it's 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 all experimentation, and you know, it's I've done that in a couple of venues in Coventry, and hopefully do some more when lockdown though is over. Uh, but when I see something, I think would really work for me, and it's exciting, you know. And it's the same when I come across people like yourself, I get excited because I think, oh, this guy's actually doing something really nice, um, <laughs> and he doesn't mind making mistakes, <laughs> and he doesn't mind messing about and saying to people that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's good fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, all good exactly. like somebody did like make the point that it it's very difficult uh, it, it is hard because ultimately i try to make money from huh. selling my work and selling my workshops and yeah. the perception of me being a professional at what i do should also be aligned with well I'm incredibly good at what I do, you know, like Mm -hmm. everything I do is incredible. And then on the back of that, people will want to attend my workshops or buy the things I create. Mm. Um, And I just think that's shite. (laughs) 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 I I, I, like, there's nobody in this world that, that people admire whatever creative output they create, like they make Mm. that, don't get things wrong all the time as they're making those things people just see the end product Mm. you know they see they see the the thing that's perceived as perfect but to get to that point that everybody's messing up along the way and everyone's blagging it and it's all all just a big game isn't it yeah of course it is yeah I i don't think you realize that for some time though do you no, and and then at that point, the, those things, whether it's kind of music or film or TV, you know, it's or books or like whatever the, the creative outlet is. As soon as it gets to that point where it's like a product, it then becomes 
a business thing, doesn't it? It becomes marketable and yes. then people buy buy into to something else as opposed to what was there to kind of make that thing. Um although I do like I do think there's there's a huge amount of interest in kind of behind the scenes and process. And I I'm, it's bizarre, like artists it's the terminology is really weird for this. So like photographers and artists and artist photographers, like, so like in the artist category, artists love talking about their process. Mm-hmm. You know, process is really important to them. Yeah. Photographers don't like at the, at the extreme end of photography, don't really talk about process. Like, at, at, at one end of it it's it's very much a technical thing it's talking about cameras lenses lighting setups which are all very technical things yeah. and it's like that's that's the process behind it and like it's to me the the process is the most important part like the end result <laughs> in some respects it like i was chatting to graham about this and this yeah. whole like concept of like well what do you what do i do with my prints after i've made them i might i'll put them in a box you know (laughs) they live in a box it's like maybe i'll exhibit them one day if 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 it's appropriate maybe i'll put them for sale but the the actual creating of it and the doing of it is so important to me i've been through those steps um that that's where the joy is you know and if you can share that I think that's that's really cool as well. Yeah, it's that can be a lot of fun. I do. I think it's just two sides to the story, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've interviewed so many people that have this different opinion. Exactly what you were saying. Some artists talk literally. Uh, the process is everything. Um yeah. And I I didn't even ever think about this till I started interviewing real artists who were probably not even great technical on a camera Mm -hmm. but they use all these other techniques i mean i interviewed this street photographer um last week last show gulnara and she set up a women's street photography sort of thing and you know if you look to it away you think well she's just a street photographer but then Mm -hmm. she's done some hand painted um pictures as well so, oh, nice. yeah, yeah and, and, and because of where she's from, so she's from this little place in Russia and where such interesting outfits are there. So she's got family photos that are black and white and then she's hand-painted in all colours to them. And mm-hmm. you know, it's so unique. And, and that's a street nice. photographer. So she balances yeah. these two areas. Oh, it's, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I... I really respect people that have, um, what's the phrase? I don't know. So some metaphor about being able to do lots of different things oh, really well. God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Like I, it, it's quite easy to do lots of things really badly, isn't it? But yes. people that can do like two or three things really well across different mediums as well. Like yeah. you get like, people that are amazing photographers and musicians and you're just like oh come on yeah. come on i'm struggling just to be one of them <laughs> <laughs> i'm the same yeah and, uh, damn you <laughs> yeah yeah it does my head in um i've been like all my life i think it'll take me 10 years to you know work a camera it's probably took me 20 years to be able to speak english well um <laughs> so yeah it's, it's, it's but I, th- I think it's like what we're saying about where you put your time and your energy and, and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Everybody's got different kind of capacities for those, the elements required for those things as well, haven't they? Yeah, like, so, yeah. as, as, as humans, mm. we're all different in that respect regards our abilities. You know, mm-hmm. like some people are, are more logical, like some people are more creative, mm-hmm. like some people are physically stronger than others. You know, what, whatever those kind of attributes are, mm-hmm. it takes some people more time t- that it would take somebody else to do the same thing. Yeah. So it's it's just human nature, ultimately. You know, and, and then you've got the complexities of how 
people's brains work as well like thrown into the mix and that's what makes us all unique and and incredible i think you nailed it there mate <laughs> <laughs> you've nailed the human no, life I'm just speaking at a shit as always it's <laughs> it's, it's gone 10 o'clock <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's where the, ra- the random thoughts just start pouring out of the, my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. Well, I think now is a good time to end the civilized part of the interview. <laughs> oh God, what happens now? <laughs> <laughs> so, I've prepared some um, different questions for you. So oh, nice. <laughs> I'm going to put you through my uh, random questions. Yeah, uh, I did actually do uh, a couple of these on um, Sunday Sixteen with Graham. Oh, nice. Yeah, because he, he says, oh, would you like to come on as a guest? And I said, but only if I can ask you some random questions. <laughs> Excellent. So he went for it. He was all right. One, two. I mean, when you listen to some of the stuff he makes up, <laughs> random is normal, isn't it? So, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I do love chatting with Graham. It's a uh... character. Absolute yeah. character. <laughs> and the thing is though he's a genuine nice person first oh yeah yeah he int- actually this this is really random he introduced me to a podcast yesterday mm. uh called the beef and dairy network <laughs> and i i've started listening to it today and it's absolutely hilarious so if you end up leaving this bit in i would highly recommend any of anybody listening to, to check out that podcast because it's uh, mm-hmm. yeah Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I've digressed. <laughs> <laughs> right, are you prepared? I'm ready. I'm ready. Wow. I'm poised. <laughs> Very different. So here we go. You come home and find a spider ironing. Right. A, a shark washing up. <laughs> and an octopus playing your guitar. Which is the scariest? Um... Uh, the spider ironing. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think we've used the iron in our house in about three years. Oh, okay. So I'd be like, where did you get that from? Why have you plugged it in? It might it might catch fire. <laughs> That's a very good point then, isn't it? <laughs> Never ask where the questions come from. <laughs> okay. So, um, a new strain of covid has come to light in the uk and gives everyone mullet hairstyles <laughs> what do we do embrace it or try for a cure oh we i think we embrace that <laughs> there's no question we we definitely embrace it like i can immediately imagine some way of customizing them because everyone's what still wants to project their personalities through their hair Mm -hmm. so yeah you'd have to embrace that and and do what you wanted whether that was dyeing maybe you could braid your mullet as well that'd be quite interesting Mm. um it'd be easy to spot who'd had it clips oh oh yeah of course so if it's a virus then yeah 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 embrace it yeah and like, would they start gathering up people that have got it? So you'd have these huge groups of people wearing mullet with mullets, wearing oh. mullets with mullets. That'd make a great photo, wouldn't it? A mullet oh, convention. God. Just, yeah. Should we see if we can organise one? <laughs> <laughs> photo shoots at the mullet convention. Must have. <laughs> okay, that's a different one. Um, <laughs> if you could have the ability of an animal would you have the sight of an eagle the prowess of a tiger the longevity of a turtle or the ability of an amphibian mm. so you've got sight prowess longevity ability or eyesight i'd probably go for the eyesight of the eagle yeah I think, yeah. Primarily because, like, all my life I've had great eyesight. I've never needed glasses or mm. or anything. And the last year or so, I've started to notice a bit of a deterioration <laughs> of them. Yeah, like, at the, at the end of, at, at, like, a day in the dark room now, by the end of it, I'm not, like, I'm struggling to use that 
focus finder a bit you know mm. it's like when i get tired eyes they they're not focusing right mm. like i wake up in the morning and everything's blurry for a bit longer oh, it's like, age, mate. yeah it's it's start they're starting to go mm. and um so at this very point in time it's like yeah if, if i could reset that <laughs> <laughs> that'd be I'd good be, i'd be happy yeah well, <laughs> and improve as well oh, that'd be nice. everything blurry with me that's my style of shooting <laughs> <laughs> well it's like ultimately it, if when, as it's going if that affects my photography then so be it you know it's just like i think you've got to embrace those things and as i was saying earlier it's like hmm. that's what makes us who we are as individuals and you i think you've got to try and get that out in your work ultimately the things that you create you've got to show a p- part of yourself in that as well yeah yeah i think you're right mate yeah getting people to em- embrace blurry photos is possibly a bit of a tricky one though but who knows mm. you know if the concept's there and the, the meanings behind it then yeah i'll see what i can do with that <laughs> <laughs> okay if the moon is made of cheese what flavor would it be uh oh <laughs> i'm gonna pull out an old cheese favorite of mine and that was port salou oh i know that one port salou and caramelized onion chutney are you for some reason i just went through a phase of eating that all the time <laughs> oh, oh god you're telling me this at night but i'm gonna get hungry now <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a fairly i think it's like slightly smoked soft cheese okay it's it's really like easily accessible cheese Mm. um (laughs) as far as cheeses go um i used to eat like you know really stinking cheeses but now i'm uh, just getting old the (laughs) the the bowels can't take that sort of food anymore (laughs) yeah i saw it was the first thing with me Uh, it's gone down (laughs) twice um in since i turned five. Oh, i know <laughs> i know it's, though i have to say i'm so grateful because i had um problems with my vision to the fact uh, i was blurring and getting really bad headaches so i went to i got an emergency um visit to an optician who put some of that stuff in your eyes and tested me sent me to hospital and it turned Ooh. out i had something called detached retina oh crikey and it's um so i'm so thankful that i went to the optician because yeah. because of that lady um she found out what was wrong with me and it basically it's another thing that can happen in um middle-aged um and it'll just come back as and when right so there's no cure for it other than um you can get laser surgery which might work might mm-hmm. not uh and i've had it three times in four years i think something like that and we've worked out it's stress related oh that's interesting mm. Well, there's only one one thing you can do about that, and that's just stay chilled then, isn't it? Exactly. So you have to um, think about these things in life. So uh, I took on a new job last year. First month, I was extremely stressed. Came back really bad. Mm -hmm. So I had to wear an eye patch for over three weeks Mm -hmm. um, until I started calming down. Uh, But it got so bad, um, work sent me to A&E. Turned around and said, um, I don't want to go in A&E because, you know, I feel physically fine. Yeah. But I just couldn't see yeah. properly. <laughs> so what, does it, does it reattach by, its, does it, like, is it actually physically detaching? Is that? Yeah, it, it that slightly moves away, which makes water go at the back of your eye, which means you uh, can't okay. focus. Oh, uh, okay. And because it moves about a little bit, um, sometimes you have out of focus bits in the middle, or sometimes it can be mm-hmm. areas. Um, and the last one was probably about the worst I've ever had. Um, and it was sort of split. So 
I had to cover it up because when I was driving, um, it was just confusing me. Okay, and you, like like you, your, bra- your brain, your yeah. brain couldn't like, your brain separate can't cope. the Yeah, so you have yeah. to cover it up. I mean, I was, I, I fell because I was leaning against the wall, uh, and I misjudged it. So I, you know, just fell over it. Um, it's quite weird than wearing an eye patch because you misjudge distances a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, but I just, we just had a laugh with it. You know, I got every pirate nickname you can ever imagine <laughs> at the office. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, your next one. So Facebook have invented a new app that takes the perfect shot and adjusts the exposure around the frame differently according to the light, making post-production a thing of the past. What would you use it? No, because it's been made by Facebook. <laughs> Sim- that's a simple one isn't it because you know as soon as you install the app not only are you using it to take photos with but it's also collecting all the data on your phone data mining <laughs> yeah <laughs> great <laughs> it's capturing every image it's probably doing like some face analytical thing on every person in all the photos that you take and storing it all and mm. there <laughs> delete it don't even install it <laughs> yeah it's one of them things i see i was thinking about this the other day where um, we've now got mirrorless and uh, some of the high-end ones you can watch the exposure happen in front of you on long exposure mm-hmm. which is pretty amazing if you think about it so surely the next step is for you to be able to control different exposures on that same shot um as in like isn't that what high dynamic range is it that's multiple, multiple shots though isn't it oh uh, okay um i guess so I, I i don't know enough about sensor technology to know no, i don't know what what can be captured in a, a single mm. kind of shutter Shutter release. I suppose um, it's a shutter release issue rather than a sensor, isn't it? So you you would have to have the ability for the shutter to work independently in different areas. Yeah, but like if it was like I suppose if you had a grid over yes. the sensor, like an N D grid of some sort mm-hmm. that had the same resolution as the sensor and then the software could independently control all of those like nd pixels almost to change yeah. the exposure going on to it that 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 could work Synthetic. i don't know I, I, I don't know enough about the technology <laughs> yeah I, I just thought oh my god this is scary stop thinking about it. <laughs> well yeah, ultimately those like, those sort of technology changes will be massively beneficial to mass consumers won't they oh that's you know, the I, I think mm. I, th- I think about like my my partner and her taking photos of our daughter, mm. and how even if the smallest kind of technical problem arises regards photography, like I don't know that she's backlit or something like that, and she doesn't know how to even just tap on mm. our daughter to change where the exposure point is. If you don't have those issues at all because the technology can compensate for it mm. then that's great isn't it because it means that in those situations everyone can get a great photo yeah you know? and it just but it'll, it'll, as as somebody who's create making an image as opposed to taking an image mm. you want to know how to control those things for your creative purpose mm. so as long as you still can control it manually i've got no problems with those sort of advancements i think that they're, they're fantastic for mass consumers as long as it's not made by facebook i've got no problems with them <laughs> i think they're all the same in my eyes um, <laughs> all data miners, yeah no that's cool thank you mate um right your final one so you have to punch present uh, sorry punch give a present <laughs> or have a pint with each of the following so choose one for oh, each crikey right what was it punch present pre- pint yes so you've okay. got john f kennedy <laughs> right john lennon and john wayne oh um 
John, let's let's start with John. I'll start with John Lennon. I'd probably want to have a pint with John Lennon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that would be quite a fascinating conversation, wouldn't it? Just yeah. Although it doesn't talk shit about the world. But he's a scouser, so would you understand that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it would take a few pints before I understood. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got I've got a Scottish friend. <clears throat> I don't I don't well, we communicate via like WhatsApp these days. Yeah. But when when we used to spend time together, I actually understood him more after a few pints than before. <laughs> You know, when I when I relaxed and I wasn't trying hard and I like, used from Glasgow, he had a really, he's got oh, a really yeah. thick accent. I was like, I used to have to try really hard to, to understand his accent. But after a few points, I was just like, yeah, I'm totally down with this. I, I know exactly what he's saying now. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> anyway, enough, enough <laughs> of that. <laughs> it is a great accent. I'm not, I'm not mocking it. <laughs> it is. Um, what were the other ones? Punch and present to oh, John present. F. Kennedy and John Wayne. Remember him? John, John, what a good old John Wayne. Mm. I would probably <laughs> go and punch John Wayne <laughs> to see what would happen. <laughs> I'm sure he could take it. Yeah, this is it, isn't it? It's like, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and let's give a present to Kennedy then. That's cool. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for going through them with me, mate. <laughs> no problems. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> no, that's cool. So my fine, uh, final thing, tell everybody where we can check you out, mate. That's important. Uh, so I am on Twitter and Instagram with the handle at the dark shed uh, and YouTube as well is at the dark shed. And my website is johnwhitmorephotography.co.uk. There we go. So please Thank you very much. check that out. Um, obviously, you'll see John doing live sessions uh, on YouTube in this very dark room I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing them once a month. Now. When lockdown first started, I was doing them every week. Uh-huh. And it just got too much. Okay. So I've decided to do it once a month now. It's the first Tuesday uh, every month at... Uh, 8 p.m. UK time. There we go. Come and say hello. No, it's cool. It's always worth seeing because um, John's got multiple camera set up so you can see him in the different areas of whether it's projecting, printing, or um, doing all the bit. When it works. Yeah. When the technology works. <laughs> oh, it's clever setup. I like that. It's yeah, I've no idea even how you do it, to be honest. So. Yeah, well, sometimes I I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder how it works. But. Cool. Um, my final thing, mate, is uh, I do this pay it forward scheme. So is mm-hmm. there anyone that you would think would make an interesting guest on a future episode? Ooh, crikey. Um, I'm going to give a shout out, uh, I haven't spoken to him in a while actually, to a photographer called uh, Chris O'Connell. Um, I, I don't I don't know what he's up to at the moment. He's um, he's a local, he's a commentary photographer. Um, I met him a few years ago. He's uh, also a writer for theatre. Oh. Um, and in the last few years, he's he's really got into analog photography and he does some really interesting work in the dark room as well. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's recently been paint like, so he, he does stuff after he's fixed the print So he'll then be painting on with inks uh-huh. and he's been like dying images and stuff like that. Yeah. But all like visually his work, like it, it's, it's really interesting. It's totally different to the sort of stuff I'm normally like drawn to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, right. See if you can get him on. Cause I'd, I'd be intrigued to hear where his, like what his process is regards creating and, mm. and why he creates what he does. So, yeah. No, thank you for that. Well, it's been a pleasure, John. Um, it's nice to have a bit of dark room talk for a change. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me on. I've really enjoyed it. It's been great fun. No, that's good. It's, it's nice to give some of that um, behind the scenes with you and, um, you know, see you in your real life sort of thing. So thanks for all your honesty, mate. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Hey 
Hey guys, I just wanted to say thank you very much for listening to that. Um, I did have a lot of fun with John, uh, I must say. We actually ended up speaking for, God, it was nearly three hours. It may have even eclipsed that, to be honest. Um, I think every minute just went into the next, went into an hour. And on, um, I think it's just um, we both get on so well. Uh, we're both passionate about what we do. And... Um, I don't hold punches and I think it was one of the most redeeming things that came out of the show to be honest that he's all about this idea of trying things um, and learning from it it's not about who's the master who knows more and what you should have done what you should have learned it was trial and error and I don't think there's enough of uh, that in this world especially around um, the dark room, I think it's been too much. Um, only high end people um, doing videos and things like that. Um, but yeah, it, it was really good. Um, so I hope you do check out um, John's YouTube channel. Uh, it really is open to suggestion for shows, which is pretty funny. Uh, and you'll see him um, do these wacky events and trials in the dark room with, with a uh, you know which is a lot of fun and uh, one thing i just wanted to say is i'm going to create a facebook group soon uh, the idea there is um, it'll give you uh, it'll give you a chance uh, if you want to forward any suggestions for the show whether it's for future guests um, to ask them questions individually or whether you um, think I should check someone out, um, feedback on the show, uh, maybe any photography you've done, books you've um, bought or learnt about um, from any of the show. Uh, I want it to be all about the community, the people that um, take part, um, find ways where we can help spread the show. And I think it'd just be nice. So what I'm going to try and do is put in there um, future guests, before I make it public, uh, publicly known anywhere. Uh, most of the time I don't share who I'm going to uh, interview that day or that week. Uh, the main reason that is just because some people can cancel at the last minute or you can never pin people down correctly. There's, there's little issues like that here and there. Um, so I think it'd be nice to give um, uh, loyalty back to you all. Um, for helping me and then that way uh, with enough notice you can maybe forward some questions and things like that and suggestions and then uh, you know, I can think about adding them to uh, my interview with these people uh, and I appreciate it's very chat based uh, but there's always uh, opportunities there uh, and I do appreciate what everyone does so that's my little idea, I will work on that uh, amongst the other million things I want to do so uh, thank you again, um, please do keep sharing the show, subscribe um, on your podcast apps and um, leave an iTunes review if you can, um, it's lovely to see uh, any feedback, I'll speak to you all soon.